wanna get it Going all in and I won't stop winning Whip it, flip it, I just wanna get it Let it all go and I won't stop winning Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hopefully your guys' day is going well. If you haven't already seen the title, this is going to be the answering portion of last week's Q&A video that we announced. And there's also going to be some videos from this morning's workout. That way it's not a super boring Q&A. You get to see a little bit of the new gym. So first question, Cortez Fitness asks, how old am I? How tall am I? And what's my five year plan? First off, I'm 26 years old, even though this baby face makes me look like a 16 year old in high school. I am 5'9", which my therapist says I'm starting to make real progress and accepting that I'm not six feet. And my five year plan, within the YouTube, I want this community to just get as big as possible. Constantly growing, people rocking the awesome brand and learning real fitness to help them get their goals that much faster. And then with sort of the career, I'm in school right now for biology, getting my AA, and then it's gonna jump into a bachelor's in biology to do biology applied sports science, which without making a 10 minute video on that itself, it essentially means a really micro involvement for a trainer. So it encompasses everything you possibly need, a nutritionist, a sports coach, a sports medicine coach, pretty much anything you would look for with the high-end athletes who would be able to help them and get them to that pinnacle, that best possible performance. That's what this person does. It's a newer field that's just starting to get really big and my five-year plan involves me getting as close and as close to that as possible. Gray Wolf Fitness asks, how's the broadband partnership going? It's going really well. Obviously, since I'm really junior to this whole YouTube thing, it's not all money, money, money. It is analytics and software they can help me out with at this point. I know a lot of you guys are out there are creators, so you know how hard it is to get copyright free music, analytics to help you title your videos, keyword search your videos better. That's what broadband does for me. You get a huge, I think it's 40,000 different like sound effects and soundtracks that are all copyright free. You're never gonna get flagged, I have zero. Uh, flags or infringements upon the channel, which is cool because I know a few of you guys out there have probably gotten a few It's um, it's pretty easy to get hit with those copyright flags and then they also help you with analytics So telling me to post a video at a certain time because that's when the target audience is going to be home or Titling things more efficiently because if you're the 16 year old kid out there going You know how to get into bodybuilding the fact that I titled my video You know me flexing for seven hours that doesn't help you find my channel, it doesn't help you find the content you're looking for. So within broadband, they're like, hey, that's a good title, I guess, but you should try this. And it just helps with the analytics for people to find your community and grow your community more efficiently. So broadband, they're doing an awesome job right now. African Assassin, two part question. First off, this dude's my homie. If you haven't already seen his unboxing for this video, I'm gonna put his link in the description below because he went above and beyond with his unboxing. He completely parodied a movie. It was ridiculous. Definitely check that out in the link, African Assassin. That's my dude. He asked, what's my worst breakup story and the scariest thing I've ever done in my life? I'm gonna answer part of it. I'm gonna announce a different video to answer the second part. So, worst breakup story, I don't have one. I've only been with one woman. I married her. She's my high school sweetheart. We've been married for almost five years, together for almost 10. Some people just get really lucky. I don't have a black book of scary exes and stalker exes. That just wasn't my life, so I've gotten really lucky on that side. The second part, the scariest part, or the scariest event in my life, I'm gonna make a whole video for that. It's gonna explain sort of my, my sort of upward trajectory into fitness, why I got into it in the beginning, and why my sort of Lifting date to where I'm at now is slightly skewed because there's there's a big chunk of time in the middle there That screwed all of it up and helped a lot of it, but I'm gonna announce that in a different video So African assassin, I'll give you half of your question answered a little bit there, but look forward to a video Sometime in the future. I don't know when I'm gonna make it, but it's definitely gonna be there for Olamov hopefully I pronounced that right man. He asked how much do I weigh? That's a really simple question. I'm gonna tack it in really fast. I weigh 195 ish Given the time of day, how much water, all those sort of variables, how many meal preps I've had, I like to think I walk around at like 195, 193, something like that. My goal is 225 and I'm getting there steadily. The upper lower split, 5,000 calories a day, it's definitely getting me up there. East Coast Fitness asks, if money wasn't an issue, what would my dream job be and what's with the 253? I'm gonna answer that part first. 253 is my hometown, Puyallup, Washington. And more specifically, I think 253 is sort of like I consider that to be Washington and obviously I'm a little bit biased in that but with my mentality behind fitness I think 
everything about who you've been, your experiences, both good and bad, make you who you are. It decides what your passion and lives are. It really is your core elements of who you are. And with me, fitness is my passion. It's my hobby. It's really the only thing I like to do. I like working on cars. I'm not going to spend my free time working on cars. I like playing video games. I'd much rather be in the gym. So it's one of those things like fitness is such a huge element in my life that when I'm having a really bad time in the gym or I'm having a really good time in the gym, all of those past memories and experiences are like clashing together to get me through that workout. So when I say, you know, 253, fitness 253, it's sort of like fitness, like who are you? It's sort of like what you've done and where you've been smashing together to make who you are in this exact moment. Obviously, if you're part of the Fitness 253 community, you're not from Puyallup, Washington. I mean, maybe, maybe you are. I know Blaine Sims out there, he definitely is. But for the most part, it just means that you share the same mentality, that fitness is everything. It's the good, it's the bad, it's where you're at right now. And then if I didn't have to worry about money and what would my dream job be, it would be this. It would honestly be running YouTube, making an awesome community, having my own gyms, having people learn real fitness and getting rid of all this BS. There's so many fad supplements and fad diets and all this kind of stuff. If I had just unlimited money to pour into it, it would just be free coaching. Everyone would be doing this real fitness grind and the, the outcome of that would be just to see so many fit people who are in love with bodybuilding. Now when people say bodybuilding, they think of like huge dudes who are just like, oh, you know, let's go lift. Anytime you do anything to promote a positive change in your body, whether it be like cardio, like jogging, walking, lifting weights, you're a bodybuilder. You're building up your body. So I would love to just see everyone be bodybuilders. George S. two part question. First part he asks, do I even lift? Question, um, answer to that is you're gonna pay. Second part, a little bit more realistic. He asks, and when I'm done with the bulk, am I gonna split up like the routine, anything like that? I'm never going to break the lean bulk unless for some fluke reason I change my mind, get to 225 and want to compete. In which case, who knows? Again, that's, that's so far in the future. That door could be closed, the door could be open, who knows? I'm never gonna stop doing the upper lower split. I'm always constantly changing my rep ranges, doing hybrid sets obviously now. Never gonna switch the upper lower split. Like I said, might do a competition grind, a, comp a competition prep a little bit later on, but for right now, I don't see it changing anytime soon. So the last question I'm going to answer, and don't worry, if I haven't got to yours, I definitely will in the multi-part series we're gonna have to do because I'm just reading all these questions. I don't have enough time for them. Um, is gonna be from Mr. Desert Mike. If you don't know who this guy is, He's on our Twitter, he's on our Instagram, obviously he's on our YouTube, one of the biggest supporters. He definitely rocks one of these shirts, so you know he's a top-notch supporter of this channel. He asked, what, or how do you set the order of your workouts and what is the evolution of your ink tattoos? So I'm gonna say, again, like African Assassin, I'm gonna split your question in half, and I'm gonna say within, with the tattoo question, I'm gonna make a whole video on that. I have nine tattoos. You would not be able to tell if I'm in a t-shirt, but as you guys have seen in the videos, I have quite a few tattoos depending on you know where they're out on my torso. They're all Norwegian based for the most part, and they're a lot of sort of the core elements of who I am. And I want to put a decent video, not like a one minute explanation of the tattoos. I've gotten them over years. I've got three tattoos in one week, so there's a lot to talk about. I'm going to answer that in a whole different video, Mike but sort of how I set the order of the sets and the exercises in my workout. That's pretty simple. I do upper lower split, duh, you guys know. But what I like to do within that upper body, I do non-complementary muscles and non-complementary exercises in a line. So I'm not going chest, 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 back, back, back. That seems counterintuitive because you're gonna already fatigue out the muscle as you go into the next group of exercises. Something like that. There's, as long as you hit non-complementary muscles, you're fine on however you wanna set that up. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I'd be happy to restructure or give suggestions for you guys' splits as well. Hopefully you guys like the answering portion of this Q&A. If you guys have any more questions, as always, put them in here. We can just continue to roll this Q&A into as many episodes as necessary so you guys get a better understanding of the man behind the camera. Hopefully you guys' day is going well. Get out there, smash a gym session. I went at like 5.40 this morning, 
the early mornings are kicking my butt, but you know what? You gotta constantly keep your body guessing, hitting it from a different time. When I switch to another time, say in the afternoon, I'm gonna have that much more energy, that much more endurance, and my body's gonna be able to progress that much faster. All that stuff aside though, thanks for watching again, everybody. Take it easy. Why always me?